In this final segment of this chapter, we establish how the density matrix simplifies the description of composite quantum systems and reveals the physical implications of entanglement. I will first give you the general picture and then we make this concrete for our previous example of a composite system made out of two two-level systems. With all our preparatory work, we can conveniently start from our description of the composite system in terms of a very long vector that can be subdivided into smaller vectors. So there are n of these subvectors, and each of these has m entries. And as before, we can look at these as states of the second part of the system that depend on the state of the first part of the system. The density matrix of a pure state of such a composite system is still given by the product of this vector and its Hermitian conjugate. This will be a Hermitian square matrix of size n times m in each direction. The crucial step is to realize that with these subvectors, this takes a very simple block form. This block form also persists when we consider a mixed state where we just have a sum of such terms. Now recall that we encountered a similar block structure for observables for the different parts of the system, which we denoted as A1 and B2. This structure then leads to a significant simplification when we work out expectation values of these observables. We obtain these by our general rule, namely taking traces of the associated operator multiplied by the density matrix. And the simplification is that we can rewrite this in terms of smaller matrices, namely the observables A or B for just the isolated parts, times the corresponding density matrix row 1 or row 2. These density matrices are called reduced density matrices, and they capture all physically relevant information about a given part when we make observations on just this part. For completeness, I give you the detailed forms of these density matrices here. What is important is that they are well defined, while the details are not too critical. So the reduced density matrix row 1 is obtained by taking the traces of the blocks of row. and the reduced density matrix row 2 is obtained by summing the diagonal blocks of row. We call these operations partial traces, and you can see that they give matrices of the correct dimensions. So what we end up with are effective states for just a part of our system. And this can be a tremendous simplification, both practically in terms of the much smaller sizes of these matrices that we are then dealing with, as well as conceptually when we ask which parts of the environment of a system we should really include into its quantum mechanical description. Indeed, we can now make very precise statements about the influence of this environment. To develop this, we start from a composite system in a pure state, and ask the question in which cases the reduced density matrices for the different parts are also pure. And this indeed has a very simple answer, namely this is exactly the case when the pure state separates, so that there is no entanglement between the part that we are interested in and its environment. Indeed, when we have a separable state that factorizes into a state for the first and the second subsystem, then the reduced density matrices are just the pure states corresponding to these factors. But now in turn this means that entanglement prevents us to designate a well-defined quantum state to any part of our system. The best that we can do is to assign a mixed state to it. But fortunately we can do this at least in all cases using the reduced density matrix. Now we immediately see what this means physically. When parts of a composite system are entangled and we only look at one of them, then we do not have all the information that we need to describe it in normal quantum mechanical terms. Instead, it looks like we do not quite know which state this subsystem is in. For the case of two two-level systems, we have a complete understanding of this role of entanglement. So to conclude this discussion, let us return to this case and illustrate what this all means in this particular situation. 
This will indeed turn out to be not too complicated. So in our normal description, the quantum state of such a system would be written in the Dirac notation as we have established before, as a superposition of basis states that account for all the combinations of the states in the parts. And we can interpret this also as a vector with four components, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. As a reminder, we also introduced a measure that tells us if such a state is separable or entangled, the concurrence as replicated here. Now in such a pure state Psi, the corresponding density matrix of the composite system would be Psi Psi dagger, which for concreteness I here write out completely. To work out the consequences for the different parts, we then break this down into four blocks of size 2 by 2, which I denote as A, B, C and D. Then the reduced density matrix of the first two level system is obtained by taking the traces of these 2 by 2 matrices. And similarly, the reduced density matrix of the second two level system is given by the sum of the two matrices A and D on the diagonal. So for our situation where the composite system itself is in the pure state Psi, this takes the form specified here. Again, I just write this down to be concrete. There will be no need to remember these expressions at all. What counts is that all of this can indeed be carried out. Namely, we just want to use these expressions to verify once and for all some very general features. First of all, we see that the traces of these density matrices are just the normalization condition for our pure state of the composite system. So this will be automatically one. Secondly, we see that these matrices are indeed Hermitian matrices. And finally, and here we come to our key point, we can also use these explicit expressions to work out the purities of these two reduced density matrices. Now this will initially be given by expressions involving many terms because we take the squares of these matrices and then the traces, but fortunately these can be rearranged into a very simple form. Indeed, the two purities turn out to take the same value, and this is directly related to the concurrence of the state of the composite system. This relation emphasizes in a very concrete way the relation between entanglement and the knowledge that we have about any part of the system. First of all, this replicates that if the concurrence vanishes so that we have a separable state, the purity of these reduced density matrices is one, just as we have established in the general case. This is the unique situation where we can still assign individual states to the two different parts of the system. In contrast, if the concurrence is equal to one, so when we have a maximally entangled state, such as a belt pair, then the purity is equal to one half. This is indeed the smallest value that the purity can take for each of these two level systems, so we are in a maximally mixed state, where each of these reduced density matrices is just one half times the identity matrix. In that case, the two systems are very strongly correlated, and by just looking at one part, we do not have any idea about its quantum state at all. So in summary, with the help of the density matrix, we succeeded to uncover a rather concrete consequence of entanglement. And with this, we come to the end of this chapter. Entanglement is a very deep quantum feature, and while quantum mechanics quickly crystallized into its present form as soon as Schrödinger and Heisenberg had written down the suitable starting points for a general description, it took a long time for people to fully appreciate its role. But once this was done, it was recognized that entanglement is a defining feature that sets quantum systems apart from classical ones. Perhaps it is the defining feature of quantum mechanics, at least to what we know so far. For instance, entanglement is one of the main resources that we try to exploit in quantum computation. Indeed, with the formulation of composite quantum systems in this chapter, and especially with the examples of systems made out of two level systems, we would be very well equipped to venture into this direction. But this would lead us into somewhat specialized territory. And so instead we turn to one final key element of the general theory. 
This concerns systems specifically made out of fundamental particles and indeed fundamentally indistinguishable particles. So this defines the subject of the next chapter.